Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Jonathan Grabowski. And before we start, just a reminder, Election Day in Marshfield is April 30th, so please get out and vote. And joining me today on the show is one of those candidates running for office in the town of Marshfield, and this person is running for select board, and it's Lynn Fiddler. Lynn, thanks for joining us. Hi, nice to see you, and thank it's... you for having me. So we're going to talk about a wide variety of things, ranging from issues in town to some mm -hmm. fun stuff, but let's kick it off with, for those that don't know, who is Lynn Fiddler? Okay. Well, I am from Marshfield. I was born here. Um, my family is from Marshfield. I have three children and a husband. I met when I was skiing at, at the age of 15 at Ragged Mountain in New Hampshire. So we've been together for a long time. This year is our 35th anniversary. I have, um, I've been through the school systems here, the public school systems, graduated from the University of Vermont. I have a degree in sociology. I spent a little time while I was at school at a battered women's shelter. So the sociology part of who I am has, has had an effect on me over the years. I also have a family business here in, in Marshfield. We have John Foster Lumber and my father had, we've had that since the 1970s. My mother's here. I have two grandbabies here and, and I intend on winning this election and I'm very excited about it and this is this is this is it for me it's first time in politics <laughs> I, it's not like I plan on right. making a career of it yeah, so talk about your community involvement you've been around you know you born and raised yeah here. yeah so we as um, a business we have been involved in the um, the grad night live program we've done a lot of work with that I have also been the chair of the ZBA here in town, and I was the president of the Marshfield Marshfield Touchdown Club, which was a was our football program here in, here in Marshfield. So uh, we also are very very quick to and be to be generous with things going on, supplies for wood, for example. Yep. That's that's. Uh, that's a common thing with yeah. with folks looking for stuff to get done. Yeah, actually, so, it's, yeah. It's, it's funny because your, your your name, the family, came up when we were doing a podcast at Grand Night Live. Oh, really? So, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So you're currently the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Correct. So talk about mm -hmm. that. So in 2014, there were some vacancies on the board, and I really didn't have much experience with the Zoning Board of Appeals. I had been through the Planning Board on a personal level and a business level for a 40B, I mean for a, um, for a um, OSRD that we were working on, which is an open space residential development. So that's really the only experience I had in permitting other than building permits and things of that nature. But it was something that sparked my interest and somebody said, you have good judgment and you'd be great for it and I just, I just, gave it a whirl and, and was appointed. So, yeah. so yeah. what have been some accomplishments well, on the ZBA? So we've had a challenging time here on the ZBA. I am, as far as I can recall, most of the folks during my terms here as the ZBA have been attorneys. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not an attorney, mm -hmm. so I bring a different, a different flair and a different tone to the to the board. I try to remain neutral. I try to really prepare and understand exactly what's going on with all of our applicants and how projects are going to be to be affected. The bylaws are critically important and that's why we're there to make sure our bylaws <coughs> are being upheld. Uh, and yeah, so a cohesive board is my goal, and every single, we have seven members on the board, it's a, it's a quasi-judicial -judi board, so it's important that we have good, 
a good strong leader in that role and and I think uh, the human side of me helps to pe put people at ease when they're because it is a little intimidating coming in front of the ZBA. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, so, yeah. So let's get to why you're here today. So yeah. why have you decided to run for select board? So the ZBA has set the stage for this with me. I feel that I offer another perspective. I know that women in town government is critically important. I'd like to encourage everybody, no matter what you have on your plate, that you need to get out there and, and really try to at least participate. So that's, I think that's mainly one of the main reasons. I just felt this was a good time. I feel like the board has a need for that type of a new tone and somebody that brings a more open perspective, perhaps, to the role, and I'm qualified for that role with my experience in the private sector. I'd like to do a little civics one-on-one -on -one with every candidate sure. that comes in here. So sure. in your view, what's the role of the select board? So the select board, in my opinion, is the financial authority on the town of Marshfield and helps to steer the town of Marshfield in the direction that the town people and town meeting has planned for them. And they need to be open to that and really keep that as their main priority. And also make sure that the departments, the, the boards, and everybody is, is, as I said earlier, cohesive in doing their jobs. So what's something you can take from your time on the ZBA and apply it to the select board? Yeah, so I think being on the ZBA has taught me skills that took a while to, to develop. It's, it's, it's difficult to have, um, have the mindset of a person coming in and, and really have, being passionate about what they want to do, a project. And, and you know, we get that at all, all different levels. We get that at the municipal level, as you've seen, mm -hmm. they, the police station and the DPW and the harbor master and the DSA. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, I, and you, the MCTV is there with us for every, mm -hmm. we had a four hour meeting this week, for example. And um, we have, we have, really work so hard to stay on track, try to always remember that we're there for the bylaws and take it one step at a time and, and really prepare for everything. And that, that preparation and detail that I bring to the job is something that I think is definitely going to be a real asset for the select board. So in your opinion, what's the current state of the town? Okay, so when I began the process of trying to determine whether or not to run for select board, which by the way, was a really big decision, I had time to, to speak to our police chief and speak to our fire chief and really understand where they are coming from. And I am so ultimate, I am really proud to be in this town and to, to have received all the information. I had no idea uh, that, 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 that there were so many details that just float, float past you in the process of, of going day to day. We're driving around town. We really don't realize that the, that the police department is, is and our, our community is as safe it is, as it is. So, yeah. But the actual state of the town and the financial the bond rating for this town is very strong, and our previous team has worked so hard on that, and that's a team effort across the board. So the financial state of the town is, in my opinion, top notch at this point when you compare it to the other, the other surrounding yeah. towns. You might have some in, in, you know, introspective on this, but you know, someone that's currently a board chair, so. <laughs> What's something you think the select board's doing well and something that you think, hey, they might want to improve upon this? Right. I think that the select board, right now there's three men on the select board, right? Right. So, and the way the select board works and people, when you go around town and you speak to people, number one, they say, who, 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 who are the select? So that, that right there tells you something. We need to, we need to be better um, able to go out and to, to communicate with our with our folks here in town. So I think that that's important to communicate and 
they have a legacy that they are going to, as a team, be remembered for at this point. And the way the pandemic was handled, and that's across the board, yeah. if, if I were their, their wise parents, I would be so ultimately proud, and I am also proud yeah. as a citizen that this town has come together to, yeah. to work through that. Yeah. So yes, that's, that's something they, they did very well and, and should be very proud of. Okay. So what do you think is the biggest issue facing the town and how would you address it if elected? The biggest issue facing the town, I think that the tone of the town, hmm. I think that the social media and the ability to communicate with all different sides of the sides of the fence. So if, for example, in, in front of our board, there are people that come in front of us they're so passionate about their opinions. And those folks, a lot of them right now seem to be in the Brent Rock, and I was, at, I was lucky enough to participate in their village association mm -hmm. meeting last week. But I think that across the board, each village or community needs to have a representative or a liaison. And I think, I think that a liaison between the select board either Either the select board hmm. encourages a person that would reach out and bring information back to the board mm -hmm. would be a real positive, positive way. Because sometimes th there's just too much friction, mm -hmm. and and that would that would be a, a step in the right direction. Excellent. So, if elected, what's mm -hmm. one big thing you want to work on? What's the thing that people would know Lynn Fiddler for? I think because I have this background in our bylaws, I think that that would be the best place for me to put my efforts. I think that there is a lot of antiquated bylaws in the town. I've seen recently, for example, we had a change in our bylaws for accessory apartments, for example. This we're waiting for the Attorney General to sign off on. This was last fall. So that particular bylaw really affected the importance of folks that decided they wanted to have an accessory apartment. In the olden days, you would call it an in-law okay. apartment. Nowadays, that's not, you don't need to have a relative living in that. It just needs to be 40% of the living space of the house. And the bylaw right there really helps in the housing stock here in town and helps mm -hmm. families keep their houses and utilize spaces within their house. So I think that's just an example of where my efforts would be able to help the town. Hmm. Excellent. So the bylaws, yeah. Yeah. So what's something you think you bring to the table in regards to the select board? Is that one thing you think that you bring? That one thing? Yeah. Or maybe I it's think a couple it's, things. I think, it, I think it's my tone. I think it's my ability to put folks at ease. Hmm. And I think it's, I think it's accountability. I, ex I expect my team to be accountable and I expect everybody to do their homework and come and come prepared. So mm -hmm. I think that's really, really my strength. Excellent. So if elected, you're one of three members. Correct. So how would you work with your fellow board members to make sure the town's the best it can be? How would I work with the town? So I think that again, communication is mm -hmm. number one. Definitely. Communication and, and transparency is, is the most important thing that we can do together on a board and listen and listen to those folks that are there to guide us in the professionals. So whether it's a legal team or soil scientists or whatever it is, we need we need to, to have communication skills to deal with that and 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 stay transparent. So one of the big things I'd say in the past, you know, five years or so is open transparent government, you know. Yes, so exactly. How would you work to make sure citizens are, are heard and people are aware of what the select board are doing? Okay. Well here, look at this. <laughs> I was a graduate in nineteen eighty one from Marshfield High School. So I haven't spent a lot of time in this new school, but this is an amazing mm -hmm. resource for the town of Marshfield. So I think that communication again, you have you have to let people know what's going on, but you need to know, they need to know what's going on so that they can interpret it, and then when they interpret it, if they're not interpreting, interpreting it correctly, they need to find 
go to the source and, and be able to ask those questions and, and mm -hmm. really really delve in and and get to the bottom of it Excellent. yep so we're on the home stretch here so we always <laughs> like to try we always try to end with some fun okay a little bit of fun you know because okay. a lot of times we talk heavy issues yeah. and you know yeah. big okay. things so what's a lynn fiddler fun fact a lynn fiddler fun fact yeah. i have so many <laughs> okay so since we were talking about marshfield high school when i was in eighth grade actually over at martinson because back then it was what a through m and n through z okay. so i was over here uh, a, a gym teacher suggested that perhaps I should give give a whirl at, at the Jesse Owens games. Okay. So the Jesse Owens games was a really big deal back then. I think I was in the newspaper and everything. So I, I competed in the 100-yard dash for the Jesse Owens games and won on the New England level oh. and, and went to UCLA and wow. competed there for the 100-yard dash. And then... <clears throat> played tennis my first couple of years here in high school and then did track my junior and senior year. So the big tidbit is, and I hate, I, I, this isn't who I am, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty low key on okay. my past, but I have the record for the 100 yard dash here in the town of out. Marshfield. And now we're meters, so there it is. There we go. Yeah, That's so start, you know, start off fast and start, finish <laughs> strong, right? So this is a campaign, <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> That's a good one. So, yeah, good one. <laughs> so in the movie about you, who's playing you? Sandra Bullock. Okay. I love Blindside, but but I don't have the outfits that she does. Okay. Well. So it, flannel, barn boots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So if people want to find out more about you, is there a place they can go? Yes. So uh, Marshfield first at gmail and i look at that all the time so send mm -hmm. me a question we're also on facebook Excellent. and twitter Excellent. and instagram yeah wow yeah. covering it all yeah so last and certainly not least why are you the best candidate for the position again i think that i have i'm a woman i think it's time for another woman to take this role i believe i would be the sixth selectman ever in the town of marshfield and i just use the word selectman so i will repeat myself and say select board and and encourage everybody to vote that way on our town our town meeting great well i want so, to thank you for joining us today no thank you so much and it's a friday yeah, afternoon i know so. and wish you the and best it's a of luck beautiful day yeah, and wish yeah. you the best of luck during this always yes, fun I exciting know. election season it's so new to me and i appreciate this is really the first actual interview i've ever had so thank you so much and that's all the time we have for meet the candidates and until next time Make it a great day. Thank you.